There are many religions in this world, but out of all of them, Christianity and Islam are the leading two. On the side of Christianity, the angelic doctor of the church, Thomas Aquinas, has written profoundly in defense of Christendom, and in his work titled Summa Contra Gentiles, Aquinas refutes the heresies which Islam's greatest prophet Muhammad taught. Aquinas starts off and states, On the other hand, those who introduced the errors of the sex proceeded in contrary fashion, as is clear from Muhammad, who enticed peoples with the promise of carnal pleasures, to the desire of which the concupiscence of the flesh instigates. He also delivered commandments, in keeping with his promises, by giving the reins to carnal pleasure, in which it is easy for carnal men to obey. Aquinas argues that Muhammad developed followers quickly from carnal and lustful pleasures that he espoused. For example, in Surah 4, Ayah 24 in the Quran, we read that, And also prohibited to you are all married women, except those your right hand possess. This is the decree of Allah upon you. The woman your right hand possess, in Ayah 24, are those women which are prisoners of war, or slaves that a Muslim may have. And according to the Quran, Allah decrees that Muslims can use their slaves and prisoners of war for sexual intercourse. This is made more clear in Sunan Abi Dawud 2155, which is an authentic Sahih graded hadith which records the context for the Quranic verse above. Abu Sa'id al Qudri said, The Apostle of Allah sent a military expedition to Altas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captives. Some of the companions of the Apostle of Allah were reluctant to have relations with the female captives because of their pagan husbands. So Allah, the Exalted, sent down the Quranic verse, And all married women are forbidden unto you, save those captives whom your right hand possess. This hadith speaks of a military expedition in which many Muslim men were wary to have intercourse with the female captives and prisoners of war. But Allah sent down the Quranic verse, in which, as we read before, gives them the right and authority to use their female captives. Verses and hadiths like these demonstrate that Muhammad misled men in the Arabian Peninsula with carnal desires, as if a man had fifty slave women, he could use them all for intercourse. Aquinas continues further and states, also, the lessons of truth which he inculcated were only such as can be easily known to any man of average wisdom by his natural powers. In fact, he mingled the truths which he taught with many fables and most false doctrines. An example of these fables that Muhammad taught, or which is known in the Quran, comes from Surah 5, Ayah 110, in which we read, And on judgment day, Allah will say, O Jesus, son of Mary, remember my favor upon you and your mother, how I supported you with the Holy Spirit, so you spoke to people in your infancy and adulthood, how I taught you writing, wisdom, the Torah, and the Gospel, how you molded a bird from clay by my will and breathed into it, and it became a real bird by my will. This same exact story of Jesus molding a clay bird and giving life to it comes from the infancy gospel of Thomas, which is a false and non-historical text about the early years of Jesus' life. The Quran and or Muhammad completely rips this story off from this false text and claims it to be real. I've covered this story in the Quran deeply in another video link below. Aquinas further adds more about Muhammad and states, nor did he add any signs of supernatural agency, which alone are a fitting witness to divine inspiration since a visible work that can only be from God proves the teacher of truth to be invisibly inspired. But he asserted that he was sent in the power of arms, which sign is not lacking even to robbers and tyrants. Aquinas argues that Muhammad did not do miracles, or at least any, that can be proven in order to demonstrate the reliability of his claims as a prophet of Allah. One of the major miracles of Islam is the splitting of the moon in Surah 54 to which there is no eyewitness testimony around the world to see such a massive event such as the moon being split into two.